when I ask the Lord to impress me with the topic, I heard in uh, the words, the mark of the beast. Now, that topic is one that Seventh-day Adventists are very familiar with. And uh, yet at the same time, it's a very challenging subject. So I'm not saying that I will be able to cover the waterfront with this, but uh, certainly I want us to study some, some things this evening uh, because uh, there's some things that are happening uh, with the papacy right now, and uh, it's amazing, and I think one that we can begin thinking about as to what this means and what, how the prophecies lead into it. So let's uh, just bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, dear Jesus, thank you so much that you have uh, the future outlined for us um, from many, many years ago when the prophet John was on the Isle of Patmos and saw these wonderful things in Revelation and of course Daniel uh, and all the revelations that he got for us at the end of time. And so I pray that you'll guide us to just the one, the uh, the things that you want us to consider this evening. Out of all the material, help us to uh, pick out some special things that we can take away with us as we watch things develop in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I don't know if um, all of you have heard or have seen the um, little announcement that the Pope is planning to go with a retinue of his people, I'm sure, but it, those who uh, work with him, and over to Mount Sinai and to proclaim a set of new Ten Commandments, according to the papacy, uh, and uh, to, which is very, very amazing if you think about it. And uh, to, <laughs> absolutely, and of course to assign uh, the Sabbath commandment to Sunday. Yeah. I'm sure he will do that, and we'll probably hear more about it. But the central uh, concept or idea that is being uh, spoken is um, the climate change and how uh, he has um, taken that theme of the climate change to be a platform upon which he can build uh, a case. It's a smoke screen for the Sunday. It's a smoke screen for <laughs> Sunday, the transformation over. And um, we know in the scriptures, uh, it was prophesied about the uh, rise of the papacy in numerous different places um, in Daniel and Revelation and the growth of it in the Middle Ages. And uh, uh, and then finally, it's demise at the end uh, as Jesus finishes and comes back to get his people. Um, and so I just want to pick up some of these things in scripture and remind us of these uh, prophecies in Daniel and Revelation that uh, open the door for us to understand the concepts that uh, Jesus gave us to tell us where we are in time. We talked mm. about... That makes me think of when you see um, 
the yeah the, yeah the right but when you see something standing in the holy place mm -hmm. yes. what, what is the um when you see that know that it is um yeah it says desolation too but the, when you see somebody standing in the in the holy place know that now is the time i'll look that up from the um, right now i have i mean this is a huge topic we've been studying it and uh matthew 24 15 when you see okay what is this Therefore, shall see the abomination desolation spoken of by Daniel prophet stand in the holy place. Abomination. Oh, okay, so that's what's that is yeah. what's standing in there. Let the yeah. Let the reader understand, and then what is it that we're supposed to understand? What comes next? Those who are in Judea. And so, um, as I said, I'm not going to be able to cover this topic in, in one night, and the and also uh, with uh, the enormity of it. I what I would like to suggest is that all of us begin to really study in in uh, Daniel and Revelation. Um, and look for clues. I just saw one that I hadn't seen before as I was studying. And, <coughs> and so uh, what, what we talked about last week, and I want to pull into this week, is that um, the, for example, the seven, uh, the several seven, seven trumpets, seven seals, seven churches, um, in Revelation, starting at the time of um, John and extending to the end of time. And so it goes over and over these seven, these series of seven events, and each one of them means something. And why is he giving us this? Why a whole book, uh, two books, to give us this? And that is so that we will know what time it is and be able to recognize it if we're really sincere. The Lord will open up to us the timing, the meaning of what we're seeing and so forth. And um, there has, so I'm going to start back in Revelation and just mention these, some of these sevens um, again. Do you, do you mind before we start the sevens that I just think it's interesting that when we see that um, standing in the holy place, um, which I feel like the Pope is doing that when he is, you know, going back to Mount Sinai where God the Father came down, unbelievable came down from heaven, which is different than just Jesus coming down. Mm -hmm. And so he, I mean, that is just so unbelievably bold. Yeah. And you're going to change the Ten Commandments now. Right. That God that, broke with his finger, uh, you know, to take the place right. in the same oh, place. Yes. In the same, in the same, same place. place. Right. On the so same place. Right. That's really, really uh, uh, made quite a statement. Yeah. Oh, oh, I yes. am in place of God. Yes. Yes. You can oh, see. What, how Satan wow. felt about it when it was being written originally, mm -hmm. you know, and that he wants to usurp whatever God did on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I thought of after that is that when you read the rest of the verse, it says to flee to the mountains. And I think that not only means to flee physically, but to go spiritually where it has those verses, how the, that all mankind is going to be coming to the Mount Zion at the end. Um, those verses that I read like in the spring, I read all those verses from, you know, how the mountain of the Lord is going to be risen up above all the mountains and all of us are going to be streaming to, And that's the sanctuary. That is the hiding place. So it's not just the physical, but the spiritual. Um, I just think that's a significant sign 
Uh, yes, and um, of course, as we look back in history, we can see um, how the disciples um, understood that to mean themselves, mm -hmm. and that the holy place was the the, the sanctuary on earth. And uh, so, and they did. They they uh, fled to the mountains and were safe uh, uh, from the armies that came and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple and killed, I forget how many, but it was a horrendous amount of, of the Jews so that the blood run, ran down the temple steps. Uh, so it was a horrible time and they saw themselves in that and uh, did something about it as they were told. The same thing is true of people at the end of time, that uh, God wants us to know what time it is and what to do uh, when it's our turn. Uh, yeah, I, I really think, I really think, uh, Karen, what we were saying about what's happening with the Pope, I really think we need, I think it's greater significance then, then I think oh, yeah. our church may be. Oh, I hope they can see. I mean, the, if this, people can this, see what you major. I mean, this making is, new Ten Commandments. I'm sorry, that's huge. I know when people see. A million people perished at Jerusalem. Yeah. What's Jewish? Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Yeah. Like just for how many Jews were destroyed the That's a lot. One million. Um, and there'll be more at the end. And they did listen to the words. They did not flee. Like yeah, those that did flee. Mm -hmm. They did not hear eat the light. See, mm -hmm. I don't know about God will have for us. We'll so be listening if there is any. Hopefully, that doesn't flee. Right. I don't think so. But I mean, not to stay in the big cities and stuff. But but. Uh, get out into the country sure. or whatever, or spiritual. Um, so um, just a review from last week. Some of you were here probably, and um, we looked at these sevens, uh, seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven, what's the other one? Um, seven churches? Seven churches, and um, and the Lord has put them, these sevens in here. Seven different things for uh, that we will just look at a little bit to help us to know when we're coming near the end. Because um, the Protestant churches do not know how to decipher Revelation, and many of them don't. Uh, don't study it, and they say that it's a closed book or whatever. But God has given a lot of light to Al Alan White and to to our early pioneers who studied these things in depth and uh, mm -hmm. kept studying, writing books and whatever uh, that they did to understand what it means, uh, Revelation, what it means. And uh, so we can just look at the churches and see that this is a, a, a not not linger very long on that but to remind us that it is a uh, panorama of history all the way to the end well Laodicea um, and so you have Ephesus uh, the church uh, that was uh, existing with the age of the disciples and that they'd lost their first love and then the church of Smyrna you know persecution happened to them and then Pergamum, uh, they were beginning to get wrong uh, doctrines into the church. Then you have Thyatira, where you're actually getting into Catholicism. And uh, let's see, Thyatira. And then what's the next one? Uh, Sardis. Um, and then, of course, Philadelphia, which is our church. So he says to Sar uh, Sardis, um, You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. But uh, 
this, um, the churches is talking about God's people. But then as we get into Revelation, the, uh, the rest of Revelation, you begin to see uh, as he goes through, let's see. I want to look, as I said briefly, these sevens and the meaning of them. Um, seven seals. I, I, I was definitely um, studying them and want to come up with just a, a little smattering of what the meaning is because that uh, is not, we don't have to have a history lesson particularly. But um, the seals, uh, as Jesus opened the seals, uh, you have um, just enough to tell you what time or what age of history these seven seals cover from beginning to end. Uh, and uh, it says, um, the first one was a, a rider that held a bow and he was um, conquer, bent on conquest. Then the, uh, the second living creature said, come and you see a fiery red horse. Uh, and that is, it says, its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. And so these are, these horses get worse and worse. Then the next one is uh, black and you have famine, a quart of wheat for a day's wages, three quarts of barley for a day's wages. So you have famine happening in the earth. Uh, and uh, then it's uh, the fourth one is a pale horse, death uh, mm -hmm. and uh, persecution, wars. You know, have the Mohammedans uh, coming through and the, and the uh, fighting in Europe and uh, on and on, uh, just horrible times that these uh, seals, uh, this, this seal is uh, describing as we look back on it. And um, then when he opened the fifth seal, I saw um, under the altar the souls of those who had been slain and how long, sovereign Lord, how holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. Now, what time was that? Hmm. Who was slaying the saints? The, the, the Catholic the, Church. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Some, that, yeah. Yeah. That, the papacy. papacy. Some say 50 million people were killed. Mm -hmm. I've read that. I mean, they don't know exactly, of course, but... I remember one that was uh, said 50 million. And so um, so the Bible is, here in Revelation is warning the people who will come to that to know that God knew ahead of time and that, that he is aware of what they're going through. And this is the time when the papacy was at its height in the Dark Ages. Um, and then... Uh, each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer. Um, and uh, that they had their judgment and uh, God knew each one of his saints and they had a white robe waiting for the end. And then um, there was a great earthquake in verse 12 and the sky receded like a scroll and every <coughs> mountain and island was moved from its place. And uh, they, then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave, every free man hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains and called to the rocks in the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the land for the great day of his wrath has come. And who can stand? There you go. There is. Can stand? Which is that? Uh, that is uh, chapter six. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it just it just occurs to me, well, not the first time, but how all these things were so much on a physical level. And I really see that so many of the things are going to be on a spiritual level, mental mm -hmm. and spiritual mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. In the, the last for the last generation. Generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Of course you have Revelation seven, which tells mm -hmm. us that that's the hundred and forty-four thousand. But anyway, 
Um, so that's the, uh, then, then it says, for the great day of his wrath has come and who can stand. And of course, mm -hmm. chapter seven uh, tells us who can stand. It's the answer mm -hmm. to the question, who can stand mm -hmm. uh, when Jesus comes? And that is the 144,000. Um, and they all received the seal in the foreheads uh, of the servants of our God. And I heard the number was 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. So um, it's an amazing, this revelation is an amazing book. There is no way to understand. I mean, it's so different from mm -hmm. the writings of Paul and the, and the four gospels and all of that. that you can understand it well, at least to whatever extent. And it's so different from the book of John. Oh, yes. That he wrote. But yeah. this mysterious <laughs> book. Different level is for everybody <laughs> from the time that Jesus was here to the <laughs> and helping each one to know if, uh, if, if it's written so that you can't understand it unless you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and you say, oh, this is us. I mean, I can imagine people in the uh, dark ages who were dying and they would, if they read that, they would say, oh, that must be us. We're being slain. And uh, we we need to hold on and 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 not get discouraged and so forth. So isn't it wonderful that the the uh, the Lord has done this um, so that the people of all, every generation has something that speaks directly to them if they study and understand. But it may you may be headed to this direction, but you can see how like even as we see the trumpets historically followed you know a lot of the works of the papacy mm. and before then mm -hmm. too and so with the seals um and how the bible predicts that there will be the rise of the papacy again mm -hmm. and how the trumpets follow its second rise as that repeat mm -hmm. and then you has a two yeah uh trumpets but you can see that in the seals as well, the horses coming, that mm -hmm. that, that we're seeing that there's going to be a repeat of mm -hmm. the red horse, you know, the red horse and the pale horse and the black horse or whatever, mm -hmm. um, as persecution rises again. So there'll be it'll still follow that same pattern throughout the repeat. Um, yeah, for the final generation to yeah. go through everything. So you have to have the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit in order to understand Absolutely. how it applies to your generation, especially the last one. Especially the last one. Um, and of course, the, the seals has the one about the horses, the white horse, That what would that be? Well, mm -hmm. that would be the time of, uh, of uh, the time of the disciples. And they, that's why they were white. And uh, they they were rode out. This is six, one and two. Uh, rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. Doesn't that describe the, the apostles in that one generation? They went all over the world in, in, uh, in conquest of people for Christ, you know? Yeah, well, and wait, the, yeah. the preaching of Paul yeah. and whatever. Well, I was just thinking then you, see how uh the final church mm -hmm. will be in conquest of the whole mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. under the minor reign well mm -hmm. and, and, and repeat, so. i'm seeing also that our adventist church all this time as you know dur especially during the philadelphia mm -hmm. era and then onward in laodicea mm -hmm. they have gone out to the whole world and mm -hmm. there's a Pretty much an Adventist presence in those places in the right. world, and then with the latter rain, it's going to look you know, it's going to grow really really exponentially. exponentially. Yeah, that was very interesting. That's amazing. Oh yeah, that's going to be another presentation from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, then um, it brings us. Um, 
it brings us then to the um, the second coming in, in that particular seal. And you see the 144,000. And then the beginning of the trumpets, which uh, we as a church um, haven't said much about the trumpets, actually. Um, oh. I wrote a book on it, uh, what how it can fit into our experience today mm -hmm. as a people. So Yeah, the thought just came to me is that, you know, it's taken like, you know, decades and centuries, you know, for, mm -hmm. for all these trumpets and all this bell bell as mm -hmm. more and more of the um, Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from the world, mm -hmm. from Christendom, and more is being poured out upon God's people, everything gets congealed and happens much faster. So that at the end of time, mm -hmm. you have this whole thing happening in one generation. One generation, and that's and it's the because thing. Because of you know the Holy Spirit is, mm -hmm. is being poured out intensely and is being withdrawn intensely. The back then it was a long stretch. The the final so, people so, will go yeah. quickly over yeah. the history yeah. of the earth right. because the papacy rises again. Right. And uh, you have the same things that they're fighting about and arguing about and persecuting mm -hmm. about. And, you know, so it's good to know these things on the long history uh, of, of, from the time of the apostles all the way to the end. But it's all, it's especially good to know what these things mean in the re, in repeating the same mm -hmm. thing, persecution, the papacy, mm -hmm. you know, and the Mohammedism and so forth even. Uh, that re can repeat in the final generation uh, and very rapidly, you know, go through. Just like the um, mm -hmm. conquering uh, and going into Canaan and going around Jericho mm -hmm. seven times, once each day, mm -hmm. this long drawn out thing. And then in the last day, mm -hmm. they went around seven times right. and everything came down right on that last yeah. day. That end time uh, is is so many things in scripture point to a finality at the end that yeah. covers the whole waterfront for that generation. How can the final be. generation be finished if they don't understand what 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 has gone before us that's going to be repeated in the final? So they're generation. going to experience it. <laughs> it yeah. What's gone on before? <laughs> in order to go through it. Because you have it. the seal being placed, uh, which means that mm. the brain has come to full uh, comprehension and obedience and spirit filled. Uh, the seal is placed when uh, a seal is placed when something is done enough to seal it. Um, whether it's uh, when you're canning, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, or whatever it is, you the have seal. To pressure. Have yes, heat that's in order to make that vacuum. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Heat. Well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it was the water bath was the slow period, and, and the pressure cooker is <laughs> <laughs> at the end of time. <laughs> and they do. They call. Yeah. Yeah. Seal. That's yeah. right. So a certain temperature. Yeah. I know we used to do that, yes. my mother and I, uh, or my mother, and then I was a helper <laughs> when I was little. Um, okay, so I think um, that we're understanding better. I'm going to read something I have in my margin here. Uh, this is written by, um, this is written by uh, Mervyn Maxwell in his book, hmm. uh, God Cares. Mm -hmm. well. Yes, uh, it's a great uh, book. Warning judgments, people who learn the lessons that the trumpets are designed to teach won't have to suffer the catastrophic judgments of the seven last plague. Now he's now talking he's, about the trumpets. So we better learn what it is. We better know what the trumpets are about. Now we read that again, Carol. 
And uh, I'm going to read a little more from him too. Warning judgments. People who learn the lessons that the trumpets are designed to teach won't have to suffer the catastrophic judgments of the seven last plagues. That's one part. Then I'll read a little more. Oh, right, saying that? No, this is Mervyn Maxwell. Huh. And he, oh, he's got books. That's me. What page is that? Um, I, I'd like to have one, and I'll hold it up so that the people can see. If you don't mind, just I had me go. This says Revelation. This is the, this huge book. This is by C. Mervyn Maxwell. God cares. Uh, it's huge. And if you want to study into all of this revelation thing, uh, this would uh, be, the, be a good set of books. And uh, he's just done a good job. Their purpose, he says, is to persuade the rest of mankind, quote, to, uh, I'm having a hard time, to repent, there you go, to repent, and uh, so all this uh, material that God has put in Revelation is very important, especially for the final generation, because it shows the progress of human beings, and what human beings do when, when, when there's God's people, but then there's demonic uh, influences that lead people gener generation after generation, you know, little by little by little, it swerves to, to the devil as he has more and more power to deceive people and to persecute and all of that sort of thing. Um, and finally, you get to the end of that. Uh, and that's where we are now. Uh, this is also Ma Maxwell. The seven trumpets are concerned with all three of the world's great religions mm -hmm. that worship the God of the Bible. The trumpets reveal God's concern for Judaism and Islam as well as for Christianity. Mm. So uh, th these, these things in Revelation, Daniel and Revelation are history books too, <laughs> as well as prophecies of the coming future. There's so much that's still future. I and mean, look at Revelation 13, mm -hmm. it's still future. It's just yes. <laughs> okay, now that uh, I have said that um let's see if there's anything else here um, okay now ellen white says about this ceiling the seal of the living god will be placed upon those only who bear a likeness to christ in character and that's what you uh, come to, by the way, in chapter seven, uh, where you have the ceiling of in the foreheads of the 144,000 in verse four of chapter seven. Um, there, uh, there are different ways of looking at uh, who is going to be before the throne. I just want to tell you from my memory, and I don't have that right here, uh, what Ellen White says. I've done some a lot of study on this in the past. Um, and she says that the first people around the throne are um, those who have been martyred for Jesus' sake. So wow. you'll have Paul and all the disciples and they're the first ones nearest the throne. I thought, well, maybe uh, all I remember is the ones who were the greatest opposers to the truth. That's true. Yes. I, I just remember that. Yeah, uh, that's right. I don't know about the turned around. Yeah, yeah, yeah turned the around. greatest opposers, which would be Paul. Martyr. And, 
than the uh, martyrs. The second okay, I, I that's true. Yeah. The the ones that opposed yes. the most will be first, then the martyrs, and then the hundred forty four thousand, as I as my memory anyway, and then the great multitude. And some people feel that the great multitude uh, is um, includes everybody, but it, it, mm. it, there are layers, evidently, of uh, okay. the reward um, according to what Ellen White says about that. Um, Okay, and and of course that you see that in chapter seven. Uh, then you have the hundred forty four thousand, and then you have the great multitude in chapter seven. After this, I looked, and there was before me a great multitude. You know what I'm saying? That uh, after this means after the the uh, hundred forty four thousand. So. Um, <clears throat> Now, you know, I guess my understanding was, is that the first group are the ones that were mostly opposed, and the second group are those who um, uh, who who kept the Sabbath under, I mean, the very end of time, those people who went through the end. It seems that, that's so, and that's what, what I, I remember from Ellen White. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, then I want to um, go on to the subject of um, the 144,000. Let's see. I have it here. Uh. Now I want to go to um, Daniel for a little while because I want to come back around to the papacy and what we're seeing today as what we've had in the past. So I'm going to Daniel. Uh, Actually, 665. There's two, just two references here. Like controversy 665. Yes. And and what is that? And, uh, basically, was this nearest throne are those who were once zealous in the cause of Satan, but who plucked as brands from the burning have followed their savior with deep, intense devotion. Next are those who perfected Christian characters in the midst of falsehood and infidelity. Those who honored the law of God when the Christian world declared it void, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. millions of all ages who were martyred for their faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be the that's good. That would be second. Ah, uh, no. Back to Christian characters. No, no, they would be. They would be. They yeah. They would be second. That's what second. Yeah. Right. Yeah, second. Right. Yeah. 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 Third. Right. Right. And then the fourth of a multitude of them. So I guess I would be almost like Paul. Paul oh, certainly mm -hmm. would be right up there. Paul <laughs> definitely is going to be a yeah. major one. You know, the, yeah. the one we know the best, really, in yeah. our yeah. history. He wrote the most of uh, the, uh, other than the Gospels, he wrote most of by the New Testament. Okay. Um, but he was zealous once in the cause of Satan. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, now, again, Daniel is given the so much history of uh, the the world and and similar, you know, kind of similar time and so forth, um, and that uh, Revelation does. Um, and uh, 
So we have studied Daniel and Revelation, and uh, we have seen the uh, the four beasts um, covering from his from his time on to the end. Uh, I want to and the and this beast that was uh, let's see. I post those. Okay, Daniel um, 7, um, and, and you have four beasts, the, the uh, lion and the leopard and the beast with four heads, and okay, uh, and verse 7, after that in my vision, at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot for what uh, underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. Um, while I was thinking about the horns, there before me another horn a little one which came up among them and three of the first horns now this is the papacy were uprooted before this this had uh had the eyes of a man and a mouth that spoke boastfully i wonder why it's a, i wonder yeah. why it's a little horn i but, wonder why it's a little horn it started little yeah you know and i mean in history yeah. uh first it was amalgamation mm -hmm. of the Christian church with paganism okay. right in the beginning. Right. And it was little. Right. Okay. But gradually it grew under the power of the evil one to because he knew, I mean, he took the, uh, the up until then, the devil's church or people were pagans. And they had their their pagan temples, and they, you know, he uh, would always counterfeit. And so the paganism was the the um, beginning of Satan's realm and what he used to get people under his uh, power and um, uh, religion. Mm -hmm. But now you you take paganism, and he amalgamates it into this little horn which is a combination of Christianity and paganism. And it starts right here. Um, the, the eyes, like the eyes of a man with a mouth that spoke boastfully. And uh, then... Um, it's not paganism that gives it its power. It's it's Christianity or, or the Christian religion Protestant. That, that gave it its power. Mm -hmm. And its magnitude, you know, it wasn't big under heathenism. Yeah, that's you true. See, because never thought of that. Yeah, that's a very good point because there wasn't enough truth there wasn't in enough it truth to make, yeah. it, make it powerful. That's right. Because that's just true. just straight out evil is yeah, you know, right. does not sweep the masses. No, because there's so many people that would like this is so to do godly, holy things. You know, mm -hmm. so now you amalgamate them. And they're not going to mm -hmm. go into paganism. But no. if you amalgamate the two, That's you know, right. instead of, uh, you know, and you keep the, them in ignorance, you know, the, the, the woman, uh, I don't know that they used to worship in paganism. I don't know about paganism. But anyway, they would uh, name it Mary instead now. Right. And, it was uh, Diana was one of them before. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, yeah. you have a gradual uh, little horn. You have a gradual coming up in the middle of all these other kingdoms and countries, and then uh, then the papacy. You have this, you know, the trappings of Christianity just <coughs> just enough to get them to come over. Just <coughs> right, because yeah, the knowledge. That's all. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is right. right. more powerful in deceiving people than just the straight evil. Yeah. Yes. 
so anyway, um, um, very interesting thought. Okay. And he says, I wanted to know the true, um, true meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying with its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot, whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the 10 horns. And so he keeps asking all this, this. And uh, as, he, as he watched, this horn was waging war against the saints and defeating them until the Ancient of Days ca came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. And so there's this war going on back and forth, God's people and Satan's people. And Satan is, is fighting with all he has to get the, uh, the major portion of the world. And so now it's interesting, you know, even some aspect of Adventism, you know, it's, 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 it's becoming more and more subtle more and more subtle the, the deceptions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know where it's even harder to discern for, for, for <clears throat> God's people well here's one that I want to bring out and that is that God is the one being judged in the judgment mm -hmm. that's what Satan would like everybody to say mm -hmm. and, it, and it sounds yes. good the way they want to say it so that everybody feels safe and it's God's character that we want to mm -hmm. live, you know, the, to be exonerated, etc. But that's not who's being judged in the judgment. It's first and foremost is the uh, beast power. That's right. It mm -hmm. says until the ancient of days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the sa saints uh, against the beast power. And then in verse 26, but the court will sit or judgment Mm -hmm. says in King James, mm -hmm. and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed right. forever. This is the beast mm -hmm. power. So in the judgment is when uh, this little horn power is being judged and removed. And there's another spot where the, it talks about that too. So what happens, every subtlety that, that, that Satan has brought against God's people I mean, uh, with you know, in, in this whole in this whole scenario here, where it's becoming more and more difficult to discern. Right, right. things right. are becoming more and more difficult to discern. Even in our own church, mm -hmm. we have stuff going on now to where people are just not knowing anymore. Mm -hmm. and whether it was I, I'm glad you brought that up because I heard that just recently again. That oh, it's not us that's being judged. It is God that's being judged as to whether He has been uh, good. Uh, good. Oh, well, we like they like to say that. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. And of course, then also it's not just the beast power, but it's also our books that the judge, the righteous are going to be judged, the wicked mm -hmm. are going to be judged. It's spoken about in many verses in the scriptures. And yes, God's character is going to be exonerated in mm -hmm. the judgment. Yeah. And he will be lifted up and um, and vindicated. And we will be a part of vindicating him. But that's just a little yeah. different subject. Absolutely. I, I'm glad that you... Well, um, the judgment is pronounced in, in, the, against them, against the, that whole power yeah. system. You know, it's, you know, and the least power, because right after it talks about the judgment was set, the court was seated and the books were opened or the judgment was set mm -hmm. and the books were opened at the end of verse 10. Then the next thing that happened, it says, then I continue to watch in verse 11 because of the boastful words, the horn was speaking. Okay, so this is the judgment time here. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire which is the final end of the judgment for the beast power. Mm -hmm. So the devil would like to take the heat off of, literally, off of himself and his the beast power as being judged during the judgment. But um, part of that is going to be that it, the beast power will be displaying itself as to who it really mm -hmm. is in the end times, what its character is really so going to be seen. <laughs> Yeah. Um, very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you added that. Um, 
I'm going to read a little bit from Ellen White's writings. Um, as we near the close of time, there will be greater and still greater external uh, parade of heathen power. That's interesting. Um, external of heathen of power. Heathen, heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. Now, I don't know how that's going to be. Well, I can tell you how some of that's happened. What? Is in everything in the media. Uh, and I tell um, Junior and the and the kids, I tell them he doesn't. He's not come up with anything new. Everything mm -hmm. you're studying, everything you're seeing in your video games and all the movies, go back to paganism from thousands of years ago. <laughs> the same thing Israel was fighting in what the stories of the Bible we've been talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. is the same thing you're watching right now. He didn't invent something new. Yeah, so it all goes back. Well, and it's amazing. And I sometimes when I'm flicking through looking for something else, we'll see uh, mm -hmm. a, a, an advertisement for the movies that are happening today. Oh. And they are just Satan himself and his, yeah. and, and his evil angels. Horrible, horrible. Just looking at it, I, you know, have to get rid of it. It's so, uh, so Satan is coming out more and more and more before the world. Yeah, these entities we were mentioning is that it's not it's not really clearly seen but that's what it is it's not you know people don't think you know oh well oh well, no the this, is just, this is just the newest thing you know it's whatever Hollywood is an entity this is an it's face is shown say it's face it's here uh evangelism 705 mm -hmm. In the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin. Are we doing that? No. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we'll do more. We, we'll do more. In some cases, yes, but not as much as we need to now, you know. Uh, Generally speaking, I think the answer would be correct. Generally speaking, in our major churches and stuff, we're mm -hmm. not. When do you hear anything about the beast power? You don't. There's a fear that yeah. our people have to expose and be the bad guy. He's talking about the love of Jesus. Um, <laughs> and then this mm -hmm. all need wisdom carefully to search out the mystery of iniquity that figures so largely in the winding up of this earth's history um read that again carol sorry all need to what all need wisdom carefully oh, to search wisdom. out the mystery of iniquity uh, the figures. See, it's the mystery of iniquity. Mystery. So mm -hmm. largely. So it's not so apparent. That figures so largely in the winding up, up of this verse history. Um, I, I think that um, it's Evangelism 705, uh, the mm -hmm. same as the other one that seems to be here. I've um, written it in. Um, here's some of the quotations I've read before, but n not everybody um, has heard them, I suppose. Um, this is from uh, Duties and Dignities of the Priest by LaCroix, Catholic uh, author. Thus, the priest may in a certain manner be called the creator of his creator. Yeah. <laughs> I've read these before, but some may not have heard it. Since by saying the words of consecration uh, of the bread, of course, he creates, as it were, Jesus in the sacrament. Um, in this, in this um, encyclical, um, that the the latest one, at least as far as I know, the latest one. 
um, he says that 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 the important thing for people is to take the sacrament. That's most important. Well, then that would, I mean, they believe that they are creating Jesus in that, and um, by eating it, but by, by saying the the priest, oh, all the right. words, priest saying whatever, and it changes into the body of Christ, and then you eat it. And They've always believed that. Haven't they? I guess so. Many um, of the martyrs refused, and that's why they were martyred. Refused the sacrament. All names which in the scriptures are applied to Christ, mm -hmm. all the same names are applied to the Pope uh, on the authority of councils 1619. Uh, we hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. The great encyclical letters of Leo you know, 13. Can you, see, I mean, really? So uh, they believe that. And this is this is all behind the um, the things that we're seeing what now. We're seeing, yeah, right, what we're right. seeing now mm -hmm. is, is they believe what I read. They are like God Almighty. Yeah, yeah. and especially yeah. the Pope. But uh, it's it's amazing. Well, it's in a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They believe it, That's right. and they're yeah, they're That's hearing right. it. They're going to. And they're deluded. Um, I can't believe that. It's not about people actually. More than that. That uh, thou art another god on earth uh, is another one. So, Lateran Council. Um, It's interesting yeah. how much of this is a counterfeit of the sanctuary, yes. their beliefs, mm -hmm. um, such as the sprinkling is like the labor. Yes. The sacrament yes. is at the table of showbread. Yes, yeah, absolutely. They do a lot with candles when you go wherever yeah. they have their mm -hmm. Novena, it's the incense. It's the great light. Light these, light these candles to prayers of saints. Well, as we can say, it's an original. And there's confession box, but you go to the priest mm -hmm. instead of the, you go to the earthly priest instead of the Jesus. And then you take on the penance of yourself. Some, you, somebody's and sitting on the you. Okay. And of course, the Sunday issue, uh, and, in the, the uh, it's all about this thing that he's going to go over and make new Ten Commandments, whatever, um, to Mount Sinai. It's all about taking the place of Jesus. Uh, we all know that. Um, and yes. yeah, and his ministry, and and the ministry of Christ, ministry absolutely. Of Christ. Um, and, but the Sabbath is going to be an issue, and I'm going to read this. Uh, as God called the church of Israel, children of Israel, out of Egypt, so that they might keep his Sabbath. So he calls the, this people out of Babylon, that they might not worship the beast in his image. The man mm -hmm. of sin has exalted himself above God by presenting a spurious Sabbath to the world the christian world has accepted the child of the papacy thus defying defying god by removing his memorial and setting up a rival sabbath the christian world yes um the very the very group of people god raised up mm -hmm. to proclaim the truth christ mm -hmm. and him crucified is, is, just, um, Karen, I, um, I'm going to take a little bit of liberty here. Um, didn't um, Catherine say that that they're teaching all the things about Sabbath and saying that it's Sunday in this the, the children's school? 
Um, maybe you don't remember. Yes, but uh, anyway, I'll just say in a broad, broad terms uh, that I heard someone recently saying that um, that the teaching about Sunday is taking taking all of the Sabbath um, texts and and mm -hmm. uh, arguments yeah. for the Sabbath, and then said. But it's Sunday. But yeah, okay. uh, well, that's, that's just recently. That's, that's their argument. That's what we do. So um, this is what we're going to be seeing, and the same thing uh, with the Pope's encyclical, mm -hmm. the latest one on um, 2018. Yes, okay. 2018, June came out. June 18th. Uh, and uh, it was accepted by the president at that time. I can't remember who he was, but whoever he was accepted it. And the UN accepted it when he was over here. Uh, he preached on the Day of Atonement. It was the exact Day of Atonement that he preached to uh, our Congress and presented his encyclical. And the thing is about climate change. And it starts with saying that, right, it, it, I, I scanned it. I didn't read every word, but I, I read a lot of it. And in the beginning, it uh, talks about the, um, the importance of what God said, that he gave us the earth to, uh, to take care of. And, uh, and he talks about the seventh day Sabbath, and read scriptures about that and everything um, and that God uh, wants us to to take care of the earth that He has made for us, and um, and then gradually through there's 184 pages. Gradually, as it goes on and on, it talks so much about climate change and how we are ruining our earth, and God told us to take care of it, and it's our duty to do obey and and so forth finally near the end he mm -hmm. said he brings back the jewish sabbath the jewish sabbath and then he says this little sentence but for us it is sunday just near the end after you've yeah. had all this other stuff you know and and starts with sabbath the jewish sabbath and ends up, but for us, so, it's so you bring it in with subtlety, and then when it when it got when it takes hold, then you you make it a big deal. Mm -hmm. But you cut you, you come under you subtle, subtle yeah. very subtle. And uh, he said it's necessary to um, to take the um, wafer. the wafer yeah. and so forth. That that's very very necessary. That's, that's so important. Near the end, though. So uh, now, as we see this happening, I, I believe that the devil, uh, when I read the, this uh, encyclical, I said, no human being wrote this. No, no, it was too, oh, it, it was so subtle, so integral and, mm -hmm. uh, and just sucked you in and all this importance that he's placing and it sounds so good. And, and and on and on and on and then at the end it's just takes you right under uh the papacy and that you should go to church and take the wafer you know because we what we just read with that that makes him god um and nothing is blatant no it's not, not great not fertility blatant. is exercised no. right so it's amazing and we uh yes now i'm going to close here by going to I mean there's a lot more that could be said um, it was a huge huge subject when I was studying it I thought help me Lord to, to get some things together that will be a, a blessing because it's it, it, it expands the more you study it the more it expands Absolutely. Um, Daniel and Revelation you know they are huge we've been studying Daniel and Revelation for a long time and it has huge amounts of things in it that um, that uh, are so important 
for us now and in the future. Okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to and almost now I want to read one one thing over in Revelation too, but this is Daniel um, 11 and this is the um, this is the history um, mm -hmm. of Satan working through various mm -hmm. uh, various things, whether it is uh, the uh, times in which Daniel lived or times into the future. And finally, we get to the king of the south will engage him in battle and the king of the north will storm mm -hmm. out against him with chariots and cavalry. My understanding is that the king of the north will be um, the papacy eventually. What it was back in those days, I don't know. But in my studies, in, uh, okay. At the at the time of the end, so we want to we want to look at that because that's now the time of the end. The king of the south will engage him in battle, and the king of the north will storm out against him with chariots and cavalry and a great fleet of, fleet of ships. He will invade many countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade invade the beautiful land. So what does that tell you about the time of the end? It's going to invade Palestine. Yeah, the beautiful land Israel. is Israel. Uh-huh. That hasn't happened yet, but we're not no. quite to that no. point. Many countries will fall, but Edom, Moab, and the leaders of Ammon will be delivered from his hand, and who knows what all that is. He will extend his power over many countries. Egypt will not escape. He will gain control of the treasures of gold and silver and all the riches of his, Egypt with the Libyans and Nubians in sub submission. But reports from the east and the north will alarm him. I'm just reading it because this is current events uh, and it, we need to ask God to help us to know so that it and not be like people uh, ignorant of what the Bible is trying to tell us about the end. Um, and he will set out in a great rage to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch his royal tents between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain. I think that's important. That's the last verse in chapter 11. He will pitch his royal tents. In other words, something physical is going to be happening in Israel. That's well, what I think the fact that he's pitching his royal tents at Mount Sinai, which is not quite Zion yet, right. that he's closing in. He's, he's closing in, in. Uh, and just setting himself up there yeah. where God was already claiming uh, his, his spot, his presence. I, I see that more clearly now as we're talking about it than I did when I read it. When I read it, I thought something's important here. What is interesting is he will come to his end and no one will help him. Yet he so will somehow come. he'll be exposed enough that that no one will will, will join him or, or side with him or, or join forces with him or something. Right. End, it seems here. Okay. Um, so here again, I just want to read. As he's being judged. Yes, we're going to see the whole world's going to see right mm -hmm. behind the scenes what's going on. Well, I don't think I mean, Satan is is a, a very astute and clever at this, um, and he sees the world right now as uh, getting ripe for him to do this. Mm -hmm. um, we have a weak. Country. Um, right now, our country, yeah, I yeah. mean, with you know, because it's uh, hard to find. I, I shouldn't be talking, I guess, but find the, the leadership that we have had in the past, the world leadership that, that we've yeah, had in the past. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so at this point, and you know, and we're bickering back and forth, uh, it's it, from the top down and you know See, all of all of chapter 12 is afterwards 
that can be kind of trouble. It seems like that. To, yeah. You know, Michael stands up. And, mm -hmm. um, Right, and so it says he will pitch his royal tents. So, so some significant thing is going to happen between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain, which uh, I don't know. Emma Lloyd says in the message of God Cares, Volume One, in the book that I'm reading, uh -huh. Amazing Prophecies, in verse 45, she's put the papacy is said to place his palace between the seas and the glorious mountain, which you just read. In scripture, Holy Mountain refers to God's true church on earth and to heaven itself, where Jesus carries on his high priestly ministry today. Mm -hmm. And then she quotes Ezekiel 28, Isaiah, mm -hmm. Daniel 9, etc. Thus scholars see in these verses a picture of Satan through the papacy putting itself between the seas, the people, and the glorious mountain, God's true church and Christ's heavenly sent ministry in heaven. Well, I, I believe 100%, of course, that that, uh, that applies. But I think there's going to be something literal, too, that, that he literally is going to do something over there. They, they've they wanted well, to for a long isn't time. Isn't this little that he's yeah. standing on Mount Zion? Mm -hmm. He's going to Sinai and going to create new tablets. I mean, who does that? But an arrogant, that's a demon. That, that, that's the demon you talked about in person human form yes yet he will come to his end and no one will help him at that time see yeah there it is see, see, this time. is very important now we don't know everything about this but i can no, tell you no. uh, we are seeing things that have never been dreamed of before at that time the great michael the great prince who protects your people will arise yes. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until trouble. then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book. That's what's happening. The judgment hour will be delivered. And multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever. So, uh, so you can see once again, not only are God are people being judged, but that little horn power is being judged. judged. When Good that whole point. thing comes to the full circle, and no one's even going to help him because they see how you know horrible whatever yeah. he allows to be exposed, then. That phase of the judgment is completed when he stands up. That's mm -hmm. right. Because in Michael Malachi 3, it says he sits to judge. So now Michael is standing up and he's finished. Yeah. Something here. It's really important. It's really important he's standing up. It's really important. So we're reading this not because we know all about it, but because it's important for our time and we need to ask God to help us to know what we're supposed to to see in this. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will run to and fro, and knowledge will be increased. And when that is our time. Many will run to and fro. But you see, um, uh, twelve one, of course, is the great time of trouble. You see, great time of trouble. Great time of trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it says, Michael, who protects your people. Like he wanted to emphasize that, mm -hmm. that he was yes. in great distress. Mm -hmm. That. Michael's going to be protected. Amen. Yeah, that's awesome. See, yeah, it's right in connection with that. It's, yeah. Well, see, that's why it's important yeah. to, to uh, read scripture uh, for your time. I know. I you know. know, um, I know. The, well, then that's where Christ gets vindicated, too. That's his character, being the protector through his people who are second witnessing going through this cleansing and second wave of say uh, hand in hand and mm -hmm. the pope and satan and his mm -hmm. people are second witnessing his image 
And is there being judged? The wicked, well, they're not, not being judged yet, but they're, they're being witnessed. They're, we're seeing the world seeing it <clears throat> more clearly. Then and that's when the Jews will come out, the faithful Jews out and see the mm -hmm. is invading mm -hmm. their space and claiming authority mm -hmm. over that. The beautiful land. The beautiful land going in there, how they're, you know, walking on sacred ground. Absolutely. Go your way, Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Then they're yeah. going to be open. Yeah. See, there's aspects of Daniel Revelation that are still going, that are still in the process of being unsealed. Right. As we move forward. That's I, I, I believe I really believe that. That's why we need to keep studying. I think it's good. I bet there are Daniel more Revelation. that there are other people that's studying this right now. Yes. Oh, I'm sure. yeah. All over the world. <laughs> yes. You may hear some some uh, some yes. preaching about it pretty soon. I hope many will be purified and spotless and refined. So Amen. that's at the same time, purified, spotless, and refined, right which is the cleansing, the cleansing work mm -hmm. of judgment of the righteous or judgment of the living. It's the cleansing time to purify us to be ready when Michael stands up. Right. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. And then you go back to the the wise virgins, you know, the wise and foolish. And you know what? It just made me feel like he stands up when he has a people that are reflecting him, second witnessing him in such a way that he can stand up. You know why he can stand up? Because he won't be standing alone. No, that's it. That's, that's it. Right. I've got up. something to think about him yeah. standing up yeah. because, because he's got to cleanse people, people that are in harmony with who he is standing. and standing with them and say, let's go. Let's finish this work. They are sealed with my character. They know they have second witness me and we have second. We, we are in harmony. We'll go forward like a mighty army with our king. I tell you what. There is going to be common people from all over the place Absolutely. All over who are going to come up and we're going to be surprised. Exactly. Going to and forward. they're going to be the ones. That's yes. why I have so much hope for so many that I love. It's that these bitter opponents are going to turn around and say, well, we were, we were blinded. And they're, the eyes and scales will fall off like coal. Amen. <laughs> Well, it says right at the end, then it says, um, from the time the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up. No, this is after. after uh, 1290 and the 1335. There will be 1290 days. I know, but this is also, this also is also a future. I think it's also. That's right. Yeah. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1335 days. I don't have the slightest clue what that would yeah, be. I know the future. I know. I know. Um, but I'm just reading this to say, isn't it time to study these things yeah, again so and not think that we know everything? You know, I mean, we know a lot, and our church has been studying this for all along, and and our scholars have come up with wonderful things and Ellen White's writings, but the, but we're not to the end yet. We we feel and we kind of have it sewed up. We think we know already, yes. and mm -hmm. it's uh it's so important to keep our minds open that God may have something to tell us about these things in our days, because of of all that it says. I mean, we we haven't seen uh, anything uh, done against the uh, Jerusalem yet. I know that's still mm -hmm. in the future. And what do you People mean against Jerusalem? Against well, where it the says here, Jerusalem, the second time. Oh, they did amazing. Yeah. The first time was at Jerusalem. This is going to be a second siege. He will come to the end, and no one will help him. He will pitch his tents between the seas oh, at the beautiful holy mountain. That has not happened. He meaning the papacy. So but there's a lot of talk that when we studied this many years ago, you know, about the rebuilding 
of the temple in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. oh, yes. etc. Mm -hmm. That the evangelical church is also very interested in, yeah. in the rebuilding of the temple, etc. I hope. And they, they maybe they read this, and I don't know, but they believe that 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 it will be rebuilt. Uh, may, many do. I mean, yeah. I have an article that I have saved for years and years and years about uh, Protestantism and how they are extremely interested in uh, in in having a temple on the Temple Mount. Oh yes, I, I have an article right. by yes, yeah, yeah, that says that they're very interested in this because that's how they see the text in a, a prophecy. And uh, yeah, so. but they do not differentiate between liberal and spiritual Israel. Right, right. <laughs> that's a major, that's one major problem. So it's there's a lot in, 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 that could happen very quickly right yes. now. Uh, and so let's be students of the word and um, not be afraid to ask the Lord to help us to see uh, how things are being rapidly fulfilled. That's like the um, five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, the extra oil, I mean, let's be humble and learn more rather than think we have it all. Exactly. And that's all we need. I was thinking of virgins earlier. That's exactly. We need right. more. Yes. Than what we've always had. Yeah, we don't, we to don't have through. enough to make it through. Yeah, we don't have enough to make it through. But we think we do. We're rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. Right, there that's the seventh church the seventh church the very final and yeah because um, we are increased in riches and in goods but that doesn't mean we have everything we have a lot yes. of light oh yeah but there's there is still more light and it's not funny that when you have a certain amount of light you can become kind of sewed up well i've got it together now kind of be proud and and think that that's it and somehow you lose that, people lose that spirit of openness and, and learning humility. The, humility, the humility. Bible yeah. is open-ended so far as it there being truth that still needs to be uncovered. Every generation it takes us should right to the coming of Jesus. Right. Yeah, that, and that's what yeah. I'm sure the Lord has wanted me to be helping people to see last week yeah. and now this week more um that it, you know that's what it's saying to me and that is that the bible has mysteries in it that are specifically for the final generation and we don't know everything uh not and we be, need, need to be very very careful about you know just saying oh i think that it means this or i think it means that or whatever we need to it has to be built on the foundation yes the the foundation. all the new revelations right. are built on the foundation they don't erode away right. it's on the solid foundation of what we already know we can uh continue to ask the lord to open things up well, that's exciting okay um let's see um Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at Ellen White's writings here. 30 to 36. What I just read. Oh no, it was 30 to 36. Oh. Incommensurate. Take place. I'm reading Ellen White's writings. One more thing. Um, well, I'm going to read it just in case it's it, it's helped something. This is letter 103, 1904. Soon the scenes of trouble spoken of in the prophecies will take place. The prophecy in the 11th of Daniel, which is what I just read, um, which is why I have it written in my Bible right there. Um, has nearly reached its complete fulfillment. Nearly. Nearly, yes. Much of this history that has taken place in the fulfillment of this prophecy will be repeated. In the 30th verse, a power is spoken of that shall be grieved in return and have indignation. 
And, um, oh, listen to this. Indignation against the Holy Covenant. That's the law of God. The Holy Covenant is the law of God. And, the, and she's talking about the future. Indignation. Yeah. Against the whole well, you know, Satan is behind all this. And, of and this. He is. So to talk so about indignation against the Holy Covenant, he, he's behind all this. And it's like he's been waiting What's, a long time to do about? this. Well, uh, just a minute and I'll fin finish. Um, and arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place abomination that oh the, a place abomination that make it oh somebody's not happy <laughs> read that again wow <laughs> but for those of you who are not near we just had a big loud thunder wow. over our house right now boom yeah it's like okay uh, what oh yeah that was scary okay now where was I? and that doesn't happen very often once no. in a while but I, I it's very rare for thunder that we even have thunder you know but to go boom over our house i don't know and arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. And then she goes on to quote that whole part. Scene similar to those described in these words will take place. You future. know what? Future. I think he talks about that. This is National Sunday Law. Yeah. I have, yeah. This, I have this sense. Just the sense I'm not being emphatic or anything, but it just sounds like the National Sunday Law. Where is that down, Carol? Yeah. Oh, Letter right. 103, 1904, oh. published in Review and Herald, July 8, 1976. Can you go really slow? Yeah, please. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, the Review and Herald part. Review and Herald, July 8, 1976. You know, July I remember finding that. Slower, please. Carol, Ju slower, uh, I'm please. sorry. Review and Herald, July 8th, okay. 1976. 1976. You know, I remember finding that in the review and writing it in here. Yeah, because that's back in our time. So what about the letter? Because it's going to be hard for us. 1876? No, 1976. It's 1976. That would be hard to find. So that would be harder to find oh. because you can't go to Ellen White, the Ellen White app, and find a review and herald of just, you know, in our lifetime. Where are you going to find that? That they only go do Ellen White's stuff. So letter, what can you tell us what the letter is? 103-1904. One. 19. And well, and I of course we'll I was this. I was reading the Review and Herald you know I and I found it then can you imagine all these years that I've had it in here from well, right back in 1976. Clap of thunder. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. well, anyway. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'm going to look that up. Then we'll find it. Then Let's print it off and share it together. Oh, yes. Let's, let's you yeah, know. It's nice to print it off. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see what we can do. So, okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. I, that study, Mother. I am blown away, actually. Because yeah, I, I, I have to, I want to read that again. Yeah, I wanted to. You're wanting to find something else? Just uh, looking at some, because as much, see, I didn't know what we were going to do, and I didn't have a whole lot of time to study. Um, 
but I wanted to find one thing. I found it. Okay. Where? You did. Oh, okay, no. where did you find it? And letter one for you, nineteen oh four, just like she said. Oh, we have no time to lose. Just time to the rest of the The war stirred with the spirit of war. Soon the secret of trouble spoken of and the prophecies will take place. The prophecy in the eleventh of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfillment. Much of the history that has taken place in fulfillment of this prophecy will be repeated in the thirteenth verse of power spoken of that shall be free and return and have indignation against the holy covenant so shall he do he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant and arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and shall place the abomination that make it desolate and and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Letter 103, 1904. Wow. Okay. Well, all of I'll, you I'll, can. We'll print that up. I'll print it. Yeah. Yeah. All the, we'll print the who want to find it and uh, are able to, just so you know, it is available from what? How did you pull it up? I just did it on the app. On the app. Okay. You know, and. And she's right. You have to go to the old uh, reference first. It's just the baby Evans. Well, thing. that is so wonderful. Praise the Lord for yes, and for too. you know we we are someplace very important and special. Uh, so yeah, there's somehow well, some, some kind of a change. change. Some, something's going on. Right. Uh, I feel something's going on. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, take it and eat it. I will, it will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. I it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. And when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you must prophesy. Again, many people's nations, language, see, and kings. See, we've got to prophesy we've again. We've got to prophesy <laughs> again. And we're not prophesying again, but we have to. When it happens, we will say, listen, this is this. It's it's this. Brings persecution. Uh, <coughs> so, all right. right. That was right. Revelation not... 10, the last few verses. Right, okay. right. <laughs> okay. Maybe somebody can else, else can pray All this right. time. Yeah. All right. Oh, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much, Lord, that you are moving forward. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are, you are bringing more light from your heavenly throne. And Lord, we want our hearts to be open. We want our hearts to be open to, to receive all the light, Lord, that we need to be able to make it through. To cling to you, Lord, because you are God. You are our Savior, Lord. And, and we know that you will carry us through, that you will carry this church through, that you will carry your people through. And so, Lord, we just pray now that you will strengthen us, that you will enlighten us, that you will help us, and that um, we will see these things as never before very, very clearly, and that the prophecies will be clear. Help us, dear Jesus, as we move forward and as you open up. Um, the windows of heaven pour us out blessings of understanding of knowledge of of wisdom that we will be able to connect that our minds will connect with the truth of this time and that we will make this truth available to those around us lord people who are seeking for light people who are seeking uh, understanding lord we just want to be able to be a conduit of that light that you want to send to others and so bless us now lord we pray and grant us a good night's rest protect us keep us safe and help us, Lord, to keep in touch, to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Wherever you're leading, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is called a study time. Yep. And that's what it gets to be because often when we're talking, uh, things come out that we didn't have 
I didn't have in the beginning. <laughs> so the Lord is good. Okay. I want to and say goodbye. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, goodbye, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed the the uh, enlightenment that the Lord is uh, doing, and you never know what's next. So. Uh,